Hello, in this video I'll give you um, a quick uh, run through the analysis so far, uh, starting from um, exploratory factor analysis all the way to structural uh, analysis. So we start with a decent data set here. Uh, basically a decent data set is supposed to have the factor of uh, 10 uh, observed uh, or 10 questionnaires collected for each question asked. Uh, so far, we find out that we have more questions um, than uh, the ratio. No, more question, the data set that we have does not satisfy the 1 to 10 ratio. So uh, throughout the analysis, you'll see that this uh, caused a, a certain compromise in the model fit. So if you collect more data in a ratio of one question uh, to 10 uh, uh, questionnaires, probably started off the right way. But in any case, this is a very good effort. It's a very big study, so it's definitely a very good effort here. So we are adding here all the factors. I have run uh, exploratory factor analysis before, and I got rid of certain factors that has multiple loadings. So the factor is loading on multiple uh, um, uh, factors. KMO is very important. Extraction, we keep it to the based on the Egan value. Rotation is pro max, I like pro max. And uh, options, we're going to suppress the 0 0.3. And then we hit OK. We find out that this is a very good value. 0 0.9 is really great, but 0 0.89 is also awesome. Uh, it's uh, moderately good. The first factor here uh, that, uh, that are responsible for the highest percentage of variance, you can see that it is not a greater than 50%. It is less than uh, 50%, so that's good. Going all the way down, we see that, for example, here, we are not going to delete info2 because uh, info2, info3, info4, uh, all the info questions are loaded in the same factor, and they are the only ones loaded in that factor. That's a good discriminant analysis. However, um, uh, uh, conversion, sorry, analysis. In terms of discriminant here, validity, sorry, not analysis, but, but validity. Uh, discriminant validity here, we can find that this factor is loading in uh, this uh, observant, uh, this item, observed item, is loading into two different factors. However, the factor it's supposed to load into, which is the factor that other uh, uh, factors in within the same theme is loading into it as well, uh, it's actually the loading is higher than the loading elsewhere. So it's loading in its corresponding factor over here, this column, uh, is higher than it's loading in any other column, so we're going to leave it. Same applies here. These are all entertainment uh, factors. This is brand fit. Uh, this is over here, expert expertise. Over here, attractiveness, attractiveness 1, 2, and 3. I don't remember why we got rid of attractiveness 4, but maybe because of double loadings. And all this doesn't suffer from double loadings. The only factor here that suffers from uh, double loadings is uh, credibility. So over here you can see 0 0.383, 0 0.9. So this is higher. We're supposed to get rid of that. And the same applies to this. However, at this point, I am not going to get rid of this because as I just said earlier, we have certain concerns regarding the, 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 the sample size. If we got the right sample size, we probably would have not got uh, this confusion. Uh, so we are following this uh, kind of uh, theoretical model. Um, all right, over here we see that all these factors are uh, not so highly correlated. We don't have any factors that are loading 0 0.6 uh, and above. All right, so having this said, we just copy the uh, pattern matrix and we go all the way to Amos, and with Amos, we are going to use a plugin. Actually, this plugin is Pattern Matrix Model Builder. I have a video that I show you how to get this plugin, um, and it's quite helpful. Now I'm going to be prompted with, an, uh, with a, a, a message here that I need to use the data, and this will automatically create the uh, measurement model. So this is a measurement model. As you can see here, credibility in this measurement model is loaded more on the 
uh, on the brand fit. So we need to change that. So I'm gonna, because I know that theoretically uh, these are loading into uh, credibility here. So I need to create a whole um, oh, uh, we shouldn't give up very quickly. Let me just uh, try to do one thing here. I done it before, which is forcing um, as you can see, credibility here is loading with expertise in the same factor. So let's uh, force eight factors. Let's not give up very quickly and see what happens. Let me see. Dimension reduction. Instead of uh, extraction with the Egan, let's try to force the nine factor. We're still getting very good KMO. We still don't have any value above 50%. Let's take a look. Same situation with the info. Here, this situation is all right now. This is okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay. And here is the credibility. And the credibility now is okay. So I believe this is quite uh, good, really. So I'm going to get rid of this and start a new file. So this is another option here that you can force. Uh, but here this will be uh, part of this, not part of this. This is okay. This is okay. This, all of them are okay. So now we have a very good uh, model here. So we're going to copy that. We're going to head to uh, Amos, plugin, return matrix. Okay, I'm going to specify the data. Uh, let me start Amos. I'm going to copy that. look at the diagram one more time this is all the fit expert precious intention pure social similarity all right all is good right now I'm gonna do something very quickly and quite uh, time consuming but necessary for visualization all right <coughs> excuse me and here I'm going to call this brand fit. It's very important that you don't have any spaces in the variable name, but it's all right to have spaces in the label, right? Over here, this is expertise. This is Hershey's mission. Entertainment. Let's hope that my spelling is correct. I'm going very quickly here. Attractiveness. Info value, I think. Finally, credibility. Perfect. And now, let's take a look at the output. I would like the standardized. I would like the modifications indices, the tests for normality. And now I'm going to go for uh, save it. Uh, sorry, I'm going to save it. I'm going to 
call it confirmatory factor analysis. And I'm going to save it there. And let's get started. Hopefully everything will run just very smoothly. I do have a license. Please don't believe this. And I just sometimes Amos acts a little weird. All right, let's try it again. Now it's going to run just perfectly. Hopefully no, no errors. You see, I do have a license. So we always look at the standardized. Over here, let's take a quick look. All of these values, the loadings, the regression loadings, are supposed to be greater than 0 0.5, optimally 0 0.7, but we are adding here the brand fit all over 0 0.5. Same applies, oh, same applies here, same applies here, same. Here we have 0 0.6 and above. Actually, 0 0.5 and above seems to be. We deleted some variables here for the parasocial, and this is probably the reason why. Mm -hmm. These are good. It's not bad, over 5. I mean over 0 0.5, to be clear. Over 0 0.5 is okay. I'm looking at them one by one, and they are all looking awesome. All right, so now that this is uh, being done, we need to also make sure that uh, there isn't very high uh, values over here. However, we do have a very high value. As you can see, we have a brand fit and credibility has a very high correlation here, 0 0.7. Also here, expertise and brand fit, 0 0.7. As expertise and credibility, 0 0.76, and uh, uh, this this can cause uh, certain problems. So this is why I also told my student we probably uh, don't need to um, um, we probably don't need to uh, measure credibility. I was surprised that we found the research paper that we trusted that they actually measured the credibility but credibility is already measured by these values so for this reason i am for more one more extra reason i am trying now to convince my student that credibility is not supposed to be here so because i i, I already said i i don't think we should measure credibility or even ask questions about credibility for this purpose so now let's run the model again and take a look. Hopefully all these standardized estimates are above 0 0.5. They are still above 0 0.5. And we don't have the, the uh, anything above 0 0.7. Some researchers are very strict and they talk about how 0 0.6 could be a quite a problem, uh, as you can see here. We have a brand fit and information value. We have expertise and information value. I'm going to keep this in mind when uh, we are uh, uh, conducting the structural equation modeling. All right, so now this is uh, looking good. There is a certain tests that I didn't go uh, over here in uh, back in uh, during the exploratory factor analysis one of the very important ones is the scale the reliability and you need to get the reliability of uh, each individual construct so information uh, uh, value here you need to get its uh, statistics here um, i'm just going to get rid of these but it's going to give us Kronbach alpha so Kronbach alpha here is 0 0.7, that is acceptable. And we need to go back again, scale, reliability. And instead of information, we're going to go over now the next one, entertainment. We got all four factors for entertainment. So here, entertainment. And we're getting the Kronbach alpha also being very nice. Scale, reliability. Instead of entertainment now, we're going to replace it by brand fit. With the brand fit, 
I eliminated some of these uh, factors. Um, I think now we are working with one, two, three, four, five. Uh, all of them, okay. Brand fit, all of them, I'm sorry. And this is very high Kronbach Alpha, 0 0.8. The Kronbach Alpha, some st studies say, say 0 0.6 and above is good. Some studies say are very proud to show that it is 0 0.7 and above. So uh, I am happy with 0 0.6 and above. I'm also happier with with uh, 0 0.7. And so far we all of it, all of ours are 0 0.7. The year's 0 0.9. It's even better and better. So with this uh, reliability test, the higher the value, the better it is. So let's talk and take a look at trust. Are we taking all the trust values? Oh, we don't even have a trust in here. Oh, I missed out on trust. I'm really sorry. Oh, I need to add a trust to the year 0 0.9 trust. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I made a mistake here. I forgot to trust. Attractiveness. And 0 0.7 to attractiveness, I think, for some reason probably a reason that has to do with the loadings we got rid of attractiveness for. Okay, 0 0.7 and above is still very good. Right? Now, last one, I think, hopefully. Are we done with similarity? No, not yet. So we need similarity. And the last one would, would be uh, here very high, 0 0.8. And And you need parasocial. With parasocial, we took two, three, five, six. After eliminating 0 0.7, that's good. Lastly, this purchase intention. So now I would like to do another test, very important test here, which is um, under uh, uh, regression, line, uh, not regression actually, under scale, reliability. But this time I'm going to check these two and I'm going to include all the variables that we are studying. Over here we're studying uh, for information 234 entertainment all of them fit so far all of them expertise all of them no credibility trust all of them attractiveness all of them oh wait a minute not attractiveness for and similarity two three five six Let's get a, take a look at the corrected item total correlation. With the corrected item total correlation, we want to make sure all of these are above 0 0.2. So, so far, all of these that we are using in our model are above even 0 0.3, I would say. Only one is 0 0.3, but all of them are above even this value. Like in, in general, they should be 0 0.2 and above. And that is uh, satisfactory. Another test that I don't want to even uh, get into, and it's uh, it's uh, it's under the multicollinearity. The multicollinearity basically you get those statistics, and you go to multicollinearity, and then you select all the variables of your study. So, for example, we have uh, info two, three, four, entertainment, all of them. Uh, expertise, trustworthiness, attractiveness, similarity, and uh, is there anything missing here? No. And then you run it and you take a look at the VIFs. Um, ideally, the VIFs are supposed to be less than 3 or less than 5. So if we take a look at the, the purchase intention, we have no problem. 
uh, if it's less than five. At the information, we have also, especially that we are taking, uh, all right, then information value, the VIF, uh, are also uh, less than five. All right, let's take a look at entertainment, also are good. Uh, fit, the brand fit are also good, less than five, all of them. Expertise are also good until we get to trust. When we get to trust, you will find out that they are over five. However, there are some uh, um, some studies they say anything below ten is okay. Anything above ten is definitely problematic. So we would say for this study, we're gonna find a certain reference here that supports the idea that anything um, over uh, 10. Ideally, anything below 3 is perfect. Then, uh, many researchers uh, I've seen that they tolerate anything below 5. Others who are desperate, as in this case, <laughs> we're going to have to find a very solid reference that we would rely on to say that here multicollinearity is uh, less than uh, 10 is okay. Otherwise, you can also try to um, uh, uh, run multicollinearity for only trust values and I will show you in a bit. Over here everything is alright. So trust might, might be problematic. I'm not going to give up right from the beginning. So I'm going to go to linear regression. Uh, analyze linear. Where is regression? Regression? Linear. The idea of multicollinearity here is basically you want to make sure that the questions are not duplicate. You're not asking the same question again and again in within. So for this purpose, we're going to take now all the trust components and find out how the VIF is for all of them. As you can see, the VIF here is around five. It's not as, as high of a value. So this means that the trust uh, questions, the questions in within trust are not redundant. So this is what the multicollinearity uh, test is actually testing, that they are not redundant. The questions are not redundant. You can ask the same question again and again, for example, or you ask the question with different adjective, but the adjectives are very close related to each other. This kind of test is very sensitive and will show if you have any problems. So in this case, if you are in doubt, you can probably delete trust three. Let's drop a trust three if you're in doubt still and you want to get a perfectly good uh, analysis. So right now, all the values are below five. So in this case, we can be comfortable saying that without a trusted tree, uh, things are uh, also satisfying the... So trust one, two, and four uh, are used uh, and we drop three for multicollinear. All right. So this is how I look into it. All right, now going into here, I'm gonna get rid of a trust tree, guys. Oh, we all already forgot about the trust altogether. All right, uh, let's uh, set the analysis again. I'm sorry for this. Let's set the analysis again. And over here, we totally, completely forgot about the trust. Uh, we don't need the credibility, uh, but let's keep it for now. And let's add the trust without trust three. And uh, don't forget that we have enforced in the extraction nine. Now we want to enforce 10 instead. However, I got rid of credibility, but who knows? Maybe right now, uh, now you, uh, credibility, when, when we start again, all over again with trust, credibility might not have that much higher, high covariance, let's say. Uh, now we have a higher KMO even. 0.9 is one of the bestest. And over here, we don't have anything that the, the, the factors are over uh, or responsible for uh, over 50% of the total variance. And over here, this is okay. This is okay. Uh, this is definitely okay because this higher loading here. This is okay. This is okay. This is okay. Ferrisocial is okay. These are very close. If you feel 
uh, let's remember to try the model fit with and without parasocial 6 and see how, how it's going to help us. Because they are very close, even though it's here close. And this is a trust. Perfect. So now copy this. Let's start all over again. And plugins. Okay. And now we have all the variables nicely done. Now I'm going to run this and call it CFA all because the other one doesn't have all the variables, right? We forgot about trust. And well, we need the output to include the standardized, the modification entities, the test for normality. I'm sure we're not going to get a very good normality check and we're gonna end up using bootstrapping now make sure that we are looking at the standardized test you see over here we still have uh, credibility highly correlated with the brand fit we still have credibility uh, uh, here highly correlated so this is 0 0.7 and above this is the highest if it's very difficult for you to see all these you basically need to go over here and go to estimates and over here you can see the regression weights these are the standardized uh, regression weights if you want to uh, uh, take a look you can see them all these are okay the covariances now as you can see here there is a very high covariance here but the rest here is 0 0.6 and above 3 and 2 The rest and here 9 and 8. Uh, so 9 and 8, as you can see here, 0 0.5, 6 and 2, as you can see here. It's very difficult to see it here, but you can copy the tables and see it on, um, and take a look on, uh, uh, on, uh, on Excel. All right, so we agreed that we are not going to use credibility because credibility seems to be problematic, really. So we're going to get rid of credibility because it is already measured by other variables and because I have seen in other research papers that they don't measure credibility. Only one research paper measured the credibility and I don't know what kind of questions they asked. They probably put it as a second order. And now let's take a look at the estimates. Make sure the covariances here. We still have one and two high covariance, 0 0.7 here. One and two. But one and two covariance is right there. Right, wait a minute. Probably looking at the wrong. Ah, these are these the variances? Oh, these are non standardized. Okay. Uh, this is, I, I'm looking at the wrong table for sure. This is one and this is two. And I can see the covariance is 0 0.59. All right, in any case, I think I, I just uh, not sure where which table reflects those uh, covariances. In any case, for now, I'm gonna just uh, try to take a look here roughly and make sure nothing is 
over 0 0.7 but over here we have 0 0.7 however let me check again uh, in my notes and see where do we take a look at the covariance table uh, I just uh, uh, failed to uh, to remember so now that we have uh, the output done let's take a look at the model fit this is below 3 that's good uh, this is supposed to be 0.8 and above, but it is not. Uh, this is a little bit around 0 0.8. This is supposed to be 0 0.9 and above, it is not. So here's a big compromisation over here. This is and this are supposed to be below 0 0.08 and they are, so that's good, good sign. So let's see what happens if we take a look at the modification indices here and we try to see if there is any errors within the same construct that are highly correlated so that we can improve the model fit. So error 27 and 35 must be very far away from each other. 24 and 27 may be close to each other within the same constru construct. 24 actually here and 27 is in a different construct. No. Pass. Uh, we can just copy this, in fact, put it in an Excel sheet. As you can see here. And then go and filter that largest to smallest. One and two and four and five are highly correlated, so let's do that. So, ne? This is error 1 and 2, and 4 and 5. Let's take a look at how the, uh, at the model fit and see how this will improve the model fit. And here's the model fit. It has become 0 0.8, exactly. This is improved. This has become 0 0.9, which is the minimum we're looking for. 0 0.9, and this is almost 0 0.9. So it has improved a lot. These are still good. Let's carry on. Maybe we can improve it even further. Error 20 and 35 are very far off. Error 3 and 7, I think far off. I think far off. Because here is 7 and here is 3. They belong to different constructs. No. Error 21, 27, probably very far off. Uh, 8 and 4, probably very far off. Yes. 22 and 25. Let's take a look. 22 and 25 are going to be far off. Yeah. 25 belongs to attractiveness. 22 belongs to parasocial, different constructs. 23 and 24 might be a potential improvement. Oh, no. No. Still not. 1 and 5. Let's take a look probably won't improve that much because it doesn't have that high value. 1 and 5. Let's run the model again and see that it might not really make that much of an improvement. It's still below 3. 0 0.81, 76, 0 0.907, almost 0 0.899. And over here, below 0 0.08, below 0 0.08. That's really good. However, this is all good. However, now we improve the model fit. However, this uh, this all the model fit and uh, all these uh, uh, results based on the assumption of normality. If we take a look at the normality assumption over here, assessment of normality, we'll find out that we are far off the normality assumption. So we are going to, you have the choice of cleaning the data. I did clean the data, but unfortunately, there is a compromisation between cleaning the data I found out here and the model fit. So this is a data that has been cleaned through deleting the high values of the Mahalanobis distance. I'm gonna show you in a bit what I did to clean it. And after cleaning the data, when I look at the model fit, uh, it's still not bad actually. Uh, it's still 
this value is a little bit compromised. I think it was a little bit higher. It was 0.89. And over here, it's still not that bad. It's still not that bad. So the way that we clean the data is basically we take a look at the Mahalanobis distance. With the Mahalanobis distance, we make sure that the distance is here. But basically, they say that you clean all the data that uh, is significant, that P1 is significant. But if you do that and you run the analysis again, you'll find still some points where P1 is still significant. So the way I look into it is delete one by one and take a look at this value over here. Uh, sorry, over here. If you remember from the previous run, it was about 30. Now it has become 23. So this means that these uh, are influential points that we need to get rid of them. And over here, I would probably get rid of 48. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, as a result of this uh, because 72 and 69 is not a smooth transition there's almost four points or three points between them but 69 and 68 only one point but 68 and 66 also there's a big jump but 68 65 64 63 62 60 59 58 you see here's also another jump that i don't like 58 and 55 so probably if you can afford getting rid of all this, these data points until you get a smooth transition here, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45. Do you see what I mean? That there's no big jumps, then you will be in a better position. Um, um, I'm probably going to do this a little bit later. For now, uh, I don't have the time to clean the data further. I'm just going to uh, 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 stop here with this kind of analysis. But I'm going to show you where I started working before I started the... Uh, uh, before I started recording today. I'm going to show you some of the analysis here that I've conducted. So one of them was uh, this model. Oh, this is, uh, this is not the file. Uh, one of them was this model in Amos. Uh, not this one, not this one, this one maybe. Sorry, it's maybe this one. I basically built the model. So we are, based on the theory, we have brand fit, entertainment, and information equality are measuring content value. Basically, the way that I've done that is I created this uh, uh, um, empty construct, and I called it content value. And that construct is measured by three main uh, uh, first order uh, uh, factors, brand fit, entertainment, and information quality. And then you have to constrain one of these lines to one and make sure you add an error term over here for the indigenous uh, variables. Then I also uh, identified or defined source influence defined by expertise, similarity, trust and attractiveness. Uh, and don't forget the error terms and one of them should be constrained. You just eh, what happened? You just double click on it and make sure you add one under regression weight. And then, of course, I tried to find the, uh, the, the, the relationships where content value is affecting purchase intention and source influence is affecting uh, purchase intention and both of them also affecting the parasocial. However, I found out that these lines were insignificant. And then thinking of it, it is absolutely making sense to me that the content value affects my influence and, and, and here, um, my influence here, the source influence. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, I, I added the content value here affecting the source influence. And then the source influence uh, is, is uh, basically affects the purchase intention through the parasocial relationships. So here, social influence through the parasocial 
affecting the purchase intention. However, when I draw this direct relationship over here, unfortunately, I don't get uh, a significant uh, relationship. So if you take a look over here, and let's take a look at the model fit. Of course, uh, because it is not uh, linear, I opted for, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to wait. I opted for a bootstrapping technique. With bootstrapping, based on a certain reference, I am going to set my uh, bootstrap samples to 250, 95, 95, ML, and here is one. And now I'm going to take a look at the standardized estimates. All of these are above uh, 0 0.5 so far, almost above 0 0.6. All of them, as you can see, perfect. And then also, I found out that this social influence has a negative influence on purchase intention, uh, which is quite weird to me. In any case, I'm going to take a look at the standardized regression values here. And I'm going to take a look at the, uh, uh, the, the significance. As you can see here, source influence has insignificant uh, effect on purchase intention because the p-value here is greater than 0 0.05. So for this purpose, I opted to get rid of this relationship so that this uh, kind of model will have all significant relationships. Now, let's take a look at the model fit, 0.8, but over here is very, very compromised. Over here is not bad, not bad, almost on the edge, over here and over here. Now, I can probably improve this, probably, if we use, if we uh, get rid of some of the data points that we were talking about, uh, that they were a little bit of outliers. So this is the model. Apparently, we found out that content value is affecting the source influence, and the source influence through its parasocial is affecting the purchase intention. Now, there is one thing that I have tested also, which is what if we find out in the literature that or you that the source affects the content value if you know if you trust me uh, you think that I am my value your, your perception of my value is uh, is high and vice versa so in this case let's run the analysis again and take a look uh, we need to find a very good literature that uh, uh, 0 0.87 here but let's take a look at the model fit 0.76 here 0 0.9 8 9 9 uh, sorry this one is below 0 0.08 below 0 0.08 um, estimates most importantly are they still significant yeah they are all significant all right, very good. So depending on the literature, of course, uh, you will either have a covariance line. I am more tempted to uh, saying that uh, content value affects my source influence. If I have a good content, then I am viewed as uh, an influential, better influential person. Uh, and I think maybe we can find literature uh, in, in, in this line, within this line. All right, now I also want to uh, say that I tested each and every one of these direct influence on purchase intention. The only factor that was uh, significant or significantly uh, uh, affects uh, purchase intention was the brand fit. And this is the factor that we added. So that's really awesome. And it only affects uh, purchase intention significantly when it is loaded on the content value, which is partly the part of the literature that we found. It's part of the content value. So this is also very awesome. Now, uh, based on one study, only one study, we found out that they're saying the content value and 
uh, source influence both affecting the parasocial. We couldn't confirm that the content value affects the parasocial. We only confirmed that source value or source influence affecting the parasocial. The content value, on the other hand, as you can see here in this video, we found out that it's affecting source influence. I'm sure we can find literature that supports this because this does make sense to me. As we find the literature that uh, supports the idea that content value should be also uh, measured not only by entertainment and information quality, but also by brand fit, and that brand fit also has a high correlation with purchase intention, seems like that study is really high quality study because we were able to confirm also and reproduce the same relationships and results. However, we were not able to show that content value is affecting the parasocial. If you talk, take a look at the parasocial, the kind of questions the parasocial asks, uh, let me take a look with you. We'll find out that it's probably a little bit difficult for us to see that. These are questions are asked. Makes me feel comfortable. I look forward to seeing him or her. I also follow him on another channel. Understand the kind of things I like. I would love to meet in person. I think we got uh, we got rid of one and four. I look forward to seeing them. I will follow their channel. Uh, I will love to meet them again. Something happens to them, I'll feel sad. So these are the parasocial questions. Now, what is the content uh, uh, type of questions? Uh, that the content is influential or beneficial uh, and so forth. However, look at the source influence. That he or she knows a lot. Uh, he or she, it's about he or she. And parasocial is about he or she. So parasocial is more about he or she as an influencer. And source influence is about he or she. However, the content value is not about he or she, it's about the content. So I, 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 I am not really surprised that the content value is not affecting the parasocial per se. It's affecting the source influence and then the source influence, we're asking it directly about he or she, is affecting he or she with the parasocial. Now, I am really surprised though on why we couldn't find here significant relationships here directly that so, uh, source influence and content value uh, directly uh, uh, influencing the purchase intention. But, well, this is the results of our research. Maybe it's due to the fact that we don't have the 1 to 10 ratio. Uh, um, uh, but as you can see here, these are the estimates over here. And the estimates, as you can see, are not significant. The ones that we just added over here, these two the uh, source influence and the content value on purchase intention were definitely not significant. So for this purpose, I dropped uh, these lines, these two lines. However, maybe if we also try to attempt to uh, clean the data a little bit more, probably, probably we might get a better model fit and probably a better, uh, uh, maybe also, uh, um, significant loadings. So this would be a uh, uh, further investigation in the future. Uh, clean up the data set again and see what happens. Uh, by the way, I am not using the clean data set. I clean the data set to a certain extent. Let's see what happens with the clean data set. But I didn't clean it all the way. I cleaned it to a certain extent. I also do not, com do want, do not want to compromise the sample size. Model fit here, you see, it's comprom the, the sample size is way much lower. At, uh, at, uh, I have references that shows that these are not no longer, recent uh, researchers are no longer looking at the uh, GFI and AGFI, the adjusted uh, GFI, goodness of fit uh, index, because these are very highly uh, dependent on the sample size. However, our sample also has its own issues. Over here, we still have uh, the values. Maybe this one is a bit higher now, 0.893 it was, or 0.994. Uh, 
Uh, so that's that's fine. Over here, we're still below 0 0.08, so that's good. Let's take a look at the estimates and see if this has uh, given us better estimates here. All of them so far are significant. Ta-da! So now as you can see, ah, this doesn't have the uh, lines. Okay. So, let's see if we're going to get... Uh, CV, content value, and SI, source influence, the loading significant, uh, significantly on person's intention. I don't think so. I already see the negative sign and it's uh, really defying uh, the theory. Let's take a look. Again, same problem. So even with cleaning the data, we still have the same problem. So maybe I won't waste my time personally. But uh, of course, if my student would like to investigate further and clean the data a little bit further, she can do that. However, so far, I am a little bit uh, perplexed on why uh, the content value did not affect the purchase intention uh, and also the source influence did not affect the purchase intention. I have to also uh, say that I immediately in investigated each and every uh, uh, first order factor over here loading on purchase in, in intention and they were not significant the only significant one was the brand fit so this is the uh, my uh, view of the analysis uh, for for as of as for me I'm gonna just take the data set as is because uh, even though I do have references that tells me that the uh, a goodness of fit index and the adjusted goodness of fit index are no longer being highly used because it's highly dependent on the sample size but if you cut a high enough a big enough sample uh, they probably won't be affected that much also so that would be a counter argument so for this purpose i'm just going to take the data as is anyway it's not uh, we're using bootstrapping and we're not assuming normality and over here we might be having uh, slightly uh, uh, actually, the values here were better over here. Just this has been affected. All right. These values are still the same. All right. All right. So this is it. This is uh, my findings. And uh, hopefully I will see you tonight at the meeting. Thank you.